Hey everyone, uh, sorry I keep doing that where I, you know, I'm like, all right, time to end the episode because uh, I didn't check the length of the segments and I recorded for an hour and 30 minutes or whatever. Yeah, that keeps happening. Sorry. Um, I've forgotten why I keep dying here. Like, I legitimately don't even remember why this was a problem for me. Which, in and of itself, could be a problem. Oh, I've got to wait for them to finish their animation. Oh, I just remembered what the issue was. It's fucking water I keep drowning in. Okay, so I can only dual wield this from the uh, from the menu. This is irritating. Yeah, and I got stuck on this thing. So pretty annoying. Nope, still blacks me out. Fantastic. Swim, Simon, swim! So, uh, I got a snack between recordings. You know, as I am wont to do. What is this? Why, why is this happening? Anyway, yeah, I got a snack between recordings. I just took a fucking chunk out of my face. Like, I was just chewing. I just bit the inside of my fucking cheek. It was so painful. It was excruciating. Um, one moment while I checked the fucking walkthrough. Hey, and we're back. Um, as it happens, this is gonna be the last episode. Something I didn't know until just now. Excuse me, ladies. Oops, uh oh, this isn't good. Yeah, this is the very end of the game. Can I drop? I can, nice. That makes it easy. All right. We cock this. Get it started in here. We gotta wait for them to finish their get up animation. And then they'll fall over in four bullets like they're supposed to. Maybe it is here. Oh, come on, Simon. Oh, I almost saw it. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Excuse me, ladies. Oh, boy. Ooh, hustle, boy. Speed run. Nice. Four chestal pots. Hang it on.
Like, I start drowning so soon. Go, Simon. Go, you fucking guy. One moment. Hey, everyone. Um, so I literally Googled, uh, cry of fear drowning? Just to see if, like, it's a bug or something. Uh, and apparently I'm not the only person who's had trouble with it. Uh, however, the issue is not the game. The issue is that it's so fucking dark that one cannot see the pockets of air that are put there by developers to make it so you can survive. Um, and they said just turn up the gamma. Someone on the scene forums uh, suggested just turning up the gamma so you can fucking see the game that you're playing. I thought this thing was supposed to be powerful. As is, all it is is just like another reboot. Okay, what the fuck? Is this a... I should be seeing something, yeah. There should be something here, right? Oh, this is awful. Well, you'll at least be able to see. I'm just gonna do that, just so I don't have to look. It'll be one that's obviously far in the future. You hug this wall and then break right whenever they go left. It's easy. You can do it if you try. And then you have to thread yourself down this little hole. Yep. Bring it on. Come on. Okay. Now, I really wish that I could just hit my fucking F5 and then just quick save, but see, I think what's supposed to happen is that. Okay. It is pitch black. No way. Like, I'm supposed to see things? Uh, hello? Alright, I've got to change my fucking settings again. One moment. Alright, we've been having some problems. But, I've got something to work. Alright. Everyone ready? This is Cry of Fear without darkness. Look at it. This is a holistic change. This is this is an experience. This is something instead of nothing. I love this. Like look at this. Now there's no guarantee that this will help the problem. Yeah, like look at this fucking thing. There you go. Like, I kept having this thing where I would surface and it would black out. And I imagine it's because of these textures over here, which might be broken. But yeah, um, some guys on the internet hooked me up. Uh, dudes on the wiki were like, okay, if you're really having troubles, here's a thing you can do. It'll hurt your... Oh, there was one. There was one. Let me up. Let me in it. Oh my god. Why is it so high? But yeah, they were like, if you're having troubles, 
type in these two things from the console. So I did cheat to get this, yes, but I honestly don't think I could have seen this, but look. This is what it looks like. So the only indication is that little circle on the floor. Because that circle is actually meant to be light. And that makes sense, but come on. Um, and this is overall a lot more enjoyable. And I had actually seen a few of those little circles before in the past. But I had no way of knowing what they were because it was so dark, I couldn't even tell that what I was looking at was supposed to be light. Like, I, I feel like now that I have this, I should just drop the shotgun, or uh, drop the, the flashlight and come back. Oh, you can hear my brother being an incel. My brother in law, I should say. Um, I should just drop the nightstick and come back with the fucking, um, the baton. Or hell, go back and get the shotgun. I'll have to boat across the lake, actually. So I think you can also follow these pipes here. Come back to the very beginning. So yeah, all the all the all the cheats in the world still can't help with the actual problem of this place. It just makes it easier for me to tell what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. Um, it might show difference in the actual game. Uh, you might be able to see it a little easier, but I couldn't see shit. I was I was blind. I was like a I was that was unplayable for me. Or, like, I should at least go back and get some adrenaline, right? Simon has the lungs of a newborn kid, I've got to say. I really shouldn't be turning around and around in here. Because all it's doing is making me lose my bearings. I think, yeah. So, yeah, I think you want to follow the pipes on the wall. You want to keep them to your right. Never fucking mind. The nice thing is that your the health loss from drowning returns as long as you breathe in that sweet, sweet air. See? My health will come back up now. And it looks like if I crouch, my stamina regeneration improves as well. Which is nice. Because, yeah, speed swimming is not good. I'm not really sure why this part's here. I guess it's supposed to be like a rebirth thing. You swim through the, the birth canal. Waters of birth. Etc. and etc. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm getting lost down here. But yeah, as I suspected, um, as I said earlier, this should be the last episode, so... I hope everyone's happy. I'm happy with this LP. Well, I'm kind of happy. I would be happier if I uh, had a little less fucking around in the earlier segments. Um. Yeah, maybe either the either the bar just increases more as you go. Like the more it has, the the quicker it recharges, which is really unfair. But that's probably pretty good for a survival horror game. Or it does, in fact, recharge quicker while you are uh, crouched down on the floor. Come on, Simon. Oh. Interesting. Well, of course it is. Why, why, why wouldn't it be locked? Eat my dick. Oh my god, that's it. Okay, well. So yeah, just for, for clarification. That's with the lights on and off. And, like, it is so fucking dark down here. Like, I legitimately don't believe that I could have done this. My vision is not amazing. I do need to wear glasses. You know, glasses. Everyone in my family does. Uh, 
Um, and me and my dad have had problems with light. Maybe it's because I'm coded to have dark vision, you know? No, I think it is. Yeah, but it's weird that it still works when I'm holding jump. I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. At least I can see places to go, though, which is quite an improvement. Am I back at the start? You bet your ass I am. All right, I'm going to go double check. I'll be right back. Everyone, I've done it. It took me quite a while, but I did finally do it. Uh, and you can see how long it took. So I've been trying this for like an hour and a half. Yeah, because that's where I first get to the lake house. That's where, and this is the save where I did it. Oh, brother. Don't, don't do that again. So, you know, yeah. Inventory. Control. Oh, God. What the fuck just happened? This is what I get for playing with low sounds. Okay. And then what happens? Oh, he happens. I see. I see. Can I get him to fuck off by going into the water? Maybe. Well, that ain't good. Okay, well. Let's drop this thing here, because while it is cool, I haven't been able to use it very much. And then we'll go back to that room, and this is probably that key, eh? The sewer key. There you go. Bing, bang, boom. Oh boy. Okay. See, this is the first time I managed to survive going to the left. But there's actually more than one little breathe hole. But yeah, um, so the breathing holes are, in fact, colored by the little, you know, discolorations down there. But, oh, good golly, it is really, really miserable to try to find your way through there. So yeah, one uh, walkthrough suggested I go to the right first. The other one suggested I go to the left first. Uh, and I've been trying to go to the right one first, but I, I tried not to read too far ahead to not spoil myself. Um, I finally read ahead here. The reason they tell you to not go that way is because they want you to drop a gun. Yeah, they want you to drop a gun in that hallway. Also, it was pointed out to me how precipitously fast this fucking... Uh, the, the drop of your stamina is underwater when you're swimming. It is awful. It, 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 you, you lose stamina at a rate that is impossible to regain. Like, you lose so much. And then there's this other thing here that sometimes I don't even see like I miss it. Get in there. Come on. Alright, so I was originally planning to, um make the episode where I review every monster a separate thing, but I might not have to do that. Oh my fucking god. I... I'm sorry. But you're all just gonna have to suffer through this with me. I, I've been here for an hour and a half trying to get this thing to work. 
you can handle a little bit of backtracking on accident. Get up there, Simon. Breathe deep, boy. And then, yeah, it also appears that crouching makes your stamina come back quicker. Um, which I like as a mechanic. It's uh, similar to this mechanic in New Vegas where you can crouch to improve the, the chances of your shot and bats or your accuracy in uh, regular shoot mode. So I'm going here. I probably should have taken a little sip of air there, but that's okay. Yeah. Fuck you. I did it. Oh, I'm feeling good. Now, what fresh hell is this? So the, these textures you're seeing, well, you ain't supposed to see them. Because recall, the game's supposed to look like this. But I kind of just got sick of it. It's a gimmick. I'm at Kirksville now, my hometown. I hope everything is okay here. So if we look, this is what it's like with max, with minimum brightness. This is max brightness. So yeah, the game is supposed to be this bright. And give me a moment. I'm going to turn up the audio of the game. Even more than what it was. One moment. All right. I just wanted, I'm back. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't too loud, but it looks good. So yeah, we're going back to uh, Kirksville, which is my home. There's a child here. It just beat him. Let me turn my audio down. So in co-op, I believe this is actually where you start the game when you're playing it. Yeah, look at how much... Like, this This makes me appreciate how much stamina Simon has in the real world. Not in the water. I guess real world Simon doesn't have a whole lot. Because, yeah, we haven't really followed up on Simon's really paralyzed in the real world. Um, yeah, don't worry. That's going to be elucidated in, like, T-minus 30 seconds. And now to just drag out this recording to make sure that I'm correct. But not too long to make sure I'm not also wrong for being too short. Yeah, there was just one child that I beat to death. Um, hi there. Man, I'm supposed to have the... Oh yeah, I, I also, um, I wanted to mention that I kept getting confused. Nani? Uh, I kept picking up revolver bullets. When what I have is... When what I had, rather, is a uh, modified pistol. That I've now lost, by the way. But, whatever. Oh, there he is. One, two, three. Nice and easy. <laughs> um, yeah, the Magnum is actually a separate gun. You can get a regular revolver. Uh, and I just completely missed it. Alright. So those magazines are for the gun that I've dropped. And th that is for a gun that I don't have. Irritating, right? If only there was a bigger inventory. Bedman? See the damn thing. Switching. I, I was gonna say the difference is night and day, but that's a little on the nose, don't you think? There he is. So yeah, in multiplayer, you start here. 
I don't know if you completely go backwards. I think you go in a, a modified path. Oh, he's here. Do it. Where's this next fool? Why did he take so much? That is illegal, sir. Robert E. Legal. Yeah, I'm just dry on this thing now. Right, well. Uh, Rodney Johnston. Oops. Don't mind that. Ah. Uh. to wield that shit and then let's go see so yeah, it's very peaceful here I'm gonna turn the brightness back up um like you can hear birds chirping not a lot's going on. There's just rando enemies. You know, it's a nice little neighborhood. Besides the monsters, but... As we've established, those aren't really here. <sighs> um, I like that the doc says cognitive behavioral therapy. Well, he says cognitive therapy, but... That's now called cognitive behavioral therapy. Man, I wish I had my shotgun. Did I miss it? Because I sure miss it. Yeah, cognitive therapy. Finally home. I hope mom's okay. So yeah, when you see your house, uh, the camera locks onto it, like, look at this, motherfucker. Yeah, you're supposed to look at it. This, this is, okay, in the nightmare world, it makes more sense. But here, you can't do that. You can't fucking park your car like that. You'll get a citation. You'll get towed and shit. All right, it's my house. Mom? Mom! Where are you? Mom! Mom! Yeah, that's very clearly a Garnier fruit, Fructis bottle, but mirrored? Yeah, they're the same one, look. That's so jank. Nice painting of a little house. It's the apartment buildings. Yeah, this is very reminiscent of their yeah, apartments. Do you want to save over the forest sewer? I'll save over the hospital for now. All right. Nice bedroom that doesn't have a door. You must trust your son a lot, Mrs. Lane? What is Simon's last name? Oh, shit. Hey, it's that shot from the intro. So. The real Simon has been writing a book this whole time about how he wants to die. And then the Simon from the book comes in. And we're in the wheelchair because we're the real Simon. And this is the gun that we are going to kill ourselves with. 
but then books I would shut up. And yeah, we control really bad. We've got awful take controls and no stamina. Carved up. There's eyes. Slashed wrists. So I think if you get the bad ending, the opposite of this happens. Like, as in you, the Simon from the book, come into the real world and murder the guy in a wheelchair. That's it. Which is, you know, not a great thing. yeah it's kind of weird like after but on the other hand this is kind of what you'd expect from Silent Hill you know oh there he is stay topped off about to waste some shots there That's okay. and yeah you can only turn it so far This is just me being nitpicky, but I would think I I would like it if uh, you actually rolled backwards a little bit when you fired. Um, Max Brooks, I think his name is. That guy's a hack, but um, he wrote a book called World War Z. It talks about you know he's on the war. Anyway, it talks about the the zombie war. Um, and in it, one of the survivors is someone in a wheelchair. And they talk about having to have a very low, uh, a submachine gun with a very low recoil. See, so yeah, this does kind of suck the tension out of it. Because you're very, very, very slow at moving. But on the other hand, this game really never wanted to be a big action shooter. And I feel like a lot of people didn't give it a chance because of that. Oh, shit. Okay, there's the gun. I, I moved away to scratch my uh, to scratch my face. My mustache has been getting very long to uh, allow me things like. Oh shit! Well, hopefully that won't screw me because. I've wasted too much ammunition. If I don't kill Simon in this clip, I'm not going to. Because I can't quick melee. Now, in the Silent Hill game, something that you could do... Well, in the Silent Hill games, if you get to the final boss, or a boss that flies... Wow. If you get to the final boss... Oh, I really got to do that again. Oh, geez. I'm sure this time it'll be even faster, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's not going to happen. My point is, in the Silent Hill games, if you get to the final boss of two, or the flying boss in one, and you have no ammunition, they will just die automatically. Just because... Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking pause this and then I'm gonna come back uh, when I was later. Bloop. All right, so we're back here. Um, I'll be honest, this part of the game, I'm not sure if it's hidden for me. Um, it just it's slow to the point of being annoying, and like I assume that what they wanted you to feel was like helplessness and shit, but like it's just really slow, and like you don't really have time to feel about the helplessness. You just have to. Kind of focus on that it sucks that you can't move. Ah. Damn it! Look at his health. All right. All right. Be right back. And I'm back. Hey everyone. So I've come to the end again.
So yeah, theoretically, it's supposed to work like, oh my god. Every time you shoot at him, like every time you and he meet, he shoots at you and you shoot at him. You have four clips. Theoretically, that's enough to shave all the four parts of his health off. Um, each time he has a new weapon. But, like, it's really irritating to work and do this. Like, I keep getting stuck on the lamps and shit, like, the, the stuff on the walls. Um, and one time I sat through the cutscene only to be greeted with the inability to move. And, like, it's not supposed to be like that, man. Like, I just tried to... The, the game wouldn't allow my character movement. Alright, bring it on. There you go, there you go. I had two to spare. Look at my health up. And let me turn my game noise up. My cat's crying, she wants food. He wants food, sorry. It's bash. I stopped myself from doing it. From committing suicide. But it didn't only leave me alive. It also left two police officers dead. I killed them. <laughs> Shot them both. This was not supposed to happen. Doctors testified that I was having a psychosis. Having a psychosis? Which means that my punishment won't be too hard for me to bear. I have to spend the rest of my life in a mental hospital. Where nurses and doctors are taking care of me. They let me finish my book. And uh, it has helped me. A lot. I wrote a happy ending. Just for myself. I feel better now. I am more at peace with myself. Even though I'm still stuck in this wheelchair. But, uh... I accept that now. I can never forgive myself for shooting those two officers, though. But I have so many supportive people around me now, so... I, I think I will be okay. Dr. Purnell is mentoring me and is watching my progress. I'm lucky to have him. Sophie visits me every once in a while. When the doctor's letter, that is... They still think her visits are too destabilizing for me and that it hinders my progress. I keep on telling her how sorry I am for making her life miserable every time she's here. She, ju she just laughs a bit and tells me to stop being so silly. But I can see the damage I've done to her in her eyes every time she looks at me. She found a new friend. One who is there for her and treats her right. I'm happy for her. Though, I'll miss the good moments we've had, knowing that they'll never come back. I think this is a good time to close this book. It has changed my life forever. The end. There it is, everyone. So, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, Silent Hill 2 ends a very similar way, where you kill a boss that's like, uh, mostly just a victory lap, but has some annoying stuff about it. Um, and then the main character reads out a letter. In Silent Hill 2, it's Mary. In this, it's Simon. Um, so we're not really sure what everything is, but we're pretty sure that the Black Day, the day that Simon was hit by a car, was the same day that Sophie turned him down. And that Carcass, the boss, is the re representation of that. There's the voice actor for Simon. Um, he and every other voice actor roll amateurs, although they got experience during the filming of this game. Yeah, that's the doctor uh, with the gas mask. Um, so you can hear Simon is a lot worse of a voice actor at the start than he is at the end. Because, like, he reads out that soliloquy. 
And it's not as good as Mary's Letter, but that's mostly because almost nothing is. Mary's Letter is one of the most important moments in any video game uh, all through history. But yes, there's a lot of homage to Silent Hill 2 and a little to 3. <laughs> so in the bad ending, Simon shoots himself in the head, and I believe, uh, Brooke Simon? Um, does something else. In one of the endings, I think he kidnaps Sophie. Because, you know, he can't stand to not have her. As opposed to Simon in that ending, where he can. Oh, yeah, the voice actor for Simon was also a QA tester. And the Doctor. Dragonborn Berserk. So, Aina Hatlev Levy must not be a uh, gamer then. Because she doesn't have an obnoxious gamer tag like Dragon Lore or Berserk. Uh, and she's not listed as a QA tester. So they must have had them QA test just because. Michael Red Rogue 13 Kekanet. Sessonet? Sessonet. Eric Acid Snake Paris. Every time I see a something snake, I assume it's a reference to uh, Metal Gear. Because, like, in. Uh, in Deus Ex Human Revolution, there's someone whose codename is Nuclear Snake, and I assume that it's meant to be a, uh, fucking Snake, uh, Metal Gear reference. They had more testers, sounds from freesound.org, naturally. Uh, impressive amount of translations, I'll be honest. It appears that the lead director was the translator for Swedish, though, so I assume he must just be bilingual and wrote the game in two languages. Donators, JC underscore Denton, I like that. Lariat, Angry Penguin, Ozma, Hell's High, Dr. Cola, Barkar, Dr. Pepper, Mizu, Eddie.Lin, Fake Bread, Funeral Wolf, that's a pretty good name, Serbian 101, Coxix, Cheeseball, Live M. Chief, Master Unreal, Lottie, Magnetist, The Great Gonzo, Milk and Cookies, Deads, Duck 354, Vosla, Muddy, Death Toll with no A, like that, Mibs Quad, Zypher, Spruce, Woolly Bear 777, Wolf. These people paid money, you know. I feel like I can choose at random and read their names. Cry, is that, who is that? I don't know who I think it is, right? Because I know he played this, but, ugh. Race, Maximus, Cheb, Kaito, Bishop, Viper Snake, Bear Jesus, Dick Balston, Shano, The Real Seraph, Coke Can, Exolink, Ziggy C, Darkstar, CL, Foreta, Slayer Sarge, Estinden, Estinden, LTJ Gamer, Chronotius, The Total King 7, Polka, Nuclear Vision, Zombie Guts, Chris, Pyro Deer, K-Man, Pi, Cox, very funny, Badass Viking, Locke, Seb Marsh, Elebs, Kitty, Lego Foot 9, Doc, Clanky Michael, Silver Marsh, Chalk Rocker, uh, Free to Play Ashley, I assume that's what that means, Indigo Raccoon, Caboose, uh, 0318, Kelso, again I think, Punson, Zebra, Bailey, Turtles, 9788, Brain Dog, Ghost 22, Sybil 22, and Damon DT. Those are everyone's whose name I read out. Uh, I fired 791 shots. Uh, I missed. I had a 70% accuracy. I saved 83 times. I found 17 weapons. I took three, uh, 1,367 damage. I <laughs> got a D rank. I got ending four. Took six and a half hours to beat this game. Yupperoonies. Unlock the Afraid of Monsters suit. The sick Simon suit. So that's the orange hoodie that you see Simon have. Developer commentary. Secret package. Nightmare mode. That mode sucks. Book page one. Book page four. Doctor mode. Hey, all right. So if I hit this, I think I can... Nope, nope, stop it. Anyway, 
Uh, that's Cry of Fear, everyone. Uh, a really legitimately good game. Um, it has a lot of flaws, but that's okay. Uh, now, as that special treat I mentioned, I'm going to be looking at every enemy in this game. My kitties are in here crying. Don't mind them. Uh, yeah, we're going to look at all the enemies. Um, oops, that's not the right one. There it is. Baby. So this is the first one, and then it explodes its head. Beep boop. And then there are these variants. Uh, the baby has no real purpose other than an ambush. Uh, they kill themselves in the process of attacking. Um, because they walk weird, there's speculation that they have a crippled spine, like Simon. Uh, and they kill themselves to hurt Simon, you know, which is another suicide theme. Children. They're just here. They're a garbage bag duct taped together wearing clothes weird stab baby um there's not too much relevance for simon but they're more related to the pedophile slash serial killer aka the apartment predator and yeah he's just here also yeah it's weird because the the apartment predator was like a real guy uh citalopram i mentioned this it's a kind of a lame name because it's just the name of a drug but yeah, it's a drug used to treat depression. It represents the drug Simon was prescribed by the doctor to treat his depression. Crawler. Common and Kripandaraj. What? Model name Kripandi. Kripand? Um, hmm. It represents the crippled state as the crawler moves only with the hands. The legs are completely broken in this version, whereas this one, they're okay. That makes sense. Representing how the legs are useless. Crazy Runner. So, um, I don't know if you guys could hear it, um, but they make a really fucked up noise. They're like... <laughs> while they chase you. Yeah, they're silent until they spot the player. They break into a rapid fit of panic breathing. Chase Simon with a knife. As you do. Um... But yeah, they're very, very weak. Yeah, two hits with a branch will kill them. But there's usually a lot of them. Croucher. A uh, variation of the slower and faceless that walks on all fours. So you can see that they have a almost Freddy Krueger-like uh, sweater. Their head is all bent around. They're really gross and weird. My cats are fighting in here because they need to ruin this recording. Uh, and you know, it's another thing with a fucked up spine because, you know, dreamer, um, do, 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 do. it might represent Simon's mother. Yeah. They only mention the mom, but never bring it up. Uh, despite being identified with a woman, it's a man face with a beard. Weird. Uh, faceless. Yeah. These are the really good ones. Got the normal ones. We got the ones that crawl around faceless ones, things with that. And things with a valve. Do, do, do. Uh, endings of... Oh, so we missed the uh, the special variants. So those are twisters. Yeah, so by the way, in the other endings, you fight Wheelchair Simon as Book Simon. The valve will fall from the twister's body and is used to begin the opening the gate to reach Six Simon. Uh, another variant. Yada yada. Uh, it's feminine, so it could feel, it could be, it could represent Sophie. Simon murders Sophie in endings one and two, and then kills himself, so it could be that. Yada, yada, yada. Festers. These are pretty common, I think. L Blade Lady or Senorita, they're called. That's funny. And the second picture won't load. There it is. I never saw those. Um, the second is only in doctor in cooperative mode. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, it's male and has cleaner blades. The head is obscured by bars, etc. Um, so yeah, it's missing its limbs and has knives instead. And the male version having a cage can represent Simon's head caged in. So you play as the cops in the cooperative mode. You play as those four cops. Um... When I said earlier that they have no real relevance, uh, they kind of do. You saw them in the ending. Um, 
And yeah, I think in the good ending of the cop playthrough, uh, they save Simon, which is kind of crazy. Flygare or Flygare. I mentioned that these are fantastic enemies. Uh, yeah, it's it's a slower strap to an upside down bed. Uh, it's the only flying monster minus carcass. They either will stab Simon with scissors or shoot at him with some sort of puke acid. Um, relevance. Simon's in gran uh, insanity and his crippled state. A common tactic on insane patients in asylum is to strain them to the beds. A nod to the mental state. The inability without uh, the inability of the creature to move without the assistance of the bed is a reference to the wheelchair. And the flagger's hands are bleeding with various slits and cuts because Simon self harms. Hanger. Yeah, they show up in this section. Um, Simon's urge to commit suicide, but since it has a female model, some speculate it might represent Simon's mother who after receiving the news about the accident might have fallen into a depression and hung herself. Um, or she might have killed herself before the start of the game, leading uh, to a deep mental trauma, which worsened than the accident. And so it's actually the original thing. Nevertheless, it's known he lives with his mom, so it's unlikely she had, her, uh, had killed herself, although Simon could just be in denial. So yeah, we never actually got a, a, a follow-up on that. Hangman. So yeah, these things you only see in that chapter. They're unique enemies. You can't kill them. And they're originally supposed to show up in Afraid of Monsters 2, which has now been cancelled. Uh, yeah, Simon's crippled state, and I assume that the tongue is meant to be like talking in the same way that Simon writes. Human flower. Those are those fucked up things. Yeah, what an awesome name for it. Just an awful enemy. Just, oh, it's so gross. It's fantastic, though. Like, I, I want to say, those things are great. They're just so icky. Yeah, so Simon's anguish of the mutilation and damage to his body as a result of the accident, so they're him being stuck in place. So psychos, as I mentioned, they only, they're suiciders with a weird paper bucket on their head. And they have the axe from Afraid of Monsters. Uh, yeah, David Leatherhoff's axe. Uh, it could represent Simon's madness or how he feels alone because the psycho stays in the dark and is, you know, closed off because of the bucket helmet. You can hear uh, my cat sharpening his claws. Uh, sumos. I don't know why they're called sumos. Is it just a, is it just a pun on them being fat guys and that they usually stay in a sewer? Um, so they're lashing out with their tongue. So another thing of like Simon's talking shit. They're tied as though they're with a straight jacket. Um, you know, the body's useless, but they can harm with their head, like Simon's mind. Interesting. Uh, slowers. Yeah, these these are your Goombas. They're uh, they're all over the place. Wow, I don't even think I saw those. Encountered in everywhere. Uh, spitters. Only in the train segment. Oh, yeah. That must be why they don't have a top half, because you're not supposed to see it. Um, can't move, and they're blindfolded. Lost feelings in his mind regarding whether he should resist suicide or pull that trigger. That makes sense. The stranger, that's what they're called. Yeah. Or Facebook. So they hurt Simon telepathically, which I don't know if I even saw that much. And the um, the hand model is uh, the same as in that hallway where I get groped by f by hands under my feet. Um, it might represent how Simon's book is starting to take a toll on him because recollecting all the memories is causing pain to his emotions. It could also represent the stranger who crashes car into Simon. I see that. Um, it's a cool enemy. But it's very common to just replace an enemy's head with a big weird thing. Look at this. Like, if you want to make a scary enemy in a survival horror game, look. Put something weird on their head. Yeah, see? Look at that. Look at this, see? Just put something weird on their head. It works every time, see? Just put a weird fucking thing in place of or... 
in place of or over the head. And that's how you've made it a monster. It's easy. It's so easy. You know, my new monster is going to be microwave head. You know, he's going to attack you. He's going to radiate you and you're going to go sterile. Sounds going to be. Mm, maybe occasionally popping uh, popcorn. Uh, they're perfect for acquiring means of ammo. Yeah, so um, very obviously, they're just symbolic of suicide. Taller. These things are great. So I already mentioned that they're fantastic. Again, if you want to make a great enemy, make them really, really big like this. And then the way that they, they curl up into little piles, that's great. So it may be personified depression. The damage it inflicts could be related to that. I think that's reaching because what um it may represent how simon feels tiny and weak in his wheelchair and everyone is massive to him and how easy it would be for them to crush him that's a lot more fun i like that and it could represent the size of the struggle of simon feels in his own head and the challenge of getting his mind in order and coming to terms with sophie's rejection and trusting dr Purnell. so yeah as as i think i mentioned um sophie rejected him on the same day that he was hit by a car um, Sophie rejected him and he was so distraught he didn't notice that uh, he was being hit by a car um, and you know so that was a pretty bad day uh, the face so yeah like I said it just shows up in the intro and then it shows up in that room later because it's they, they were just reusing the, the, the model it's unknown significance because they were just making a creepy a creepy thing. It's very intimidating at first, but is just insane and capable of movement and helpless. Just like a lot of the monsters in this game. Uh, we got Upper with a handstander. That's the weird um, monster that, you know, does like it do. The fact that it walks on its hands could represent that Simon can't use his legs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And then the Watros. So these things only show up in uh, the dock level, which I don't even think you see, you don't even see in uh, yeah Lake. You don't even see it in the single player. They're essentially just like a piece of the human flower. And then we got the enemies: Sawer, Sawyer, Sower. See, it's just Pinhead. It's just well, his name isn't Pinhead. Because canonically, this dude's name is Lead Cenobite. <laughs> That's stupid. But yeah, this is another thing that they were just like, yeah, sure. Hey, another uh, enemy in a like a horror franchise with a fucked up head. Ding ding. Um, yeah, he's just covered in pins. He's got an eye on his back. Uh, Simon's fear of being chased by his inner demons pushing him to the edge. Ortha's sadistic child abuser. Um, and Simon is cut in half whenever he's killed. And you don't really kill the Sawyer. You lower his health until he kills himself. Because, you know. Cut it off. Great. Uh, next we got Saw Runner. Hey, fucked up face in a horror game. So Star Runner is essentially a pyramid head. They say that, but not at all. It has health. That's impressive. I would argue that it's more like Nemesis from uh, RE3. Yeah, he's just a really tough guy. I love Vince Simon. Um, the masks are all happy. Could represent Simon's real life masks, showing himself normal to other, but overwhelmed by hatred and sadness in his mind. Could also be insanity or uh anxiety attacks uh mace yeah we didn't really talk about this guy i i just had a little trouble with his boss fight but that's kind of about it it doesn't even mention a uh relevance so you can see that part of the issue is that um Sometimes it's like a classic uh, Silent Hill game where things are just twisted. And sometimes it's like the other Silent Hill games where, you know, it's not normal things. They get all mutated and fucked up. It is more 
these are things that you know, these these are things from your own head and this one has no relevance to Simon it's just there so Dr. Purnell you can see he's just a he's just a guy Berserk 89 Purnell is his counselor uh, yeah, in ending two, he apologized to Purnell. In one and three, he murders Dr. Purnell. And then you beat the game and you get it. Uh, Dr. Purnell is shooting book Simon is a metaphor for the real world damage Purnell's treatment could have on Simon. Trusting the doctor and giving the gun results in the loss of a uh, larger chunk of health and refusing to trust him. A metaphor of how the decision would play out in real life. Opening to him in the short term would cause Simon great pain potentially have a larger payoff so you lose more health but you get the good ending or a, a better ending um not opening up to him is good in the short term because you don't have to risk getting your hopes up to crash from a defensive relapse but in the long term it's bad because you you kill yourself in the ending so you know um carcass another thing trapped in a chair and again, you know, with clarity, we can really see, yeah, these are all like mantras with screwed up legs and wheelchairs. A symbol of Simon's grief in regards to Sophie, connecting her fate to the creature's own, or it represents Simon, uh, since it has no feet, can't walk, and sits in a chair. Uh, Simon mentions he feels like he's a piece of meat in his chair, and Simon is tied down because he can't walk. Um... Simon's self-loathing and discussion of how he feels gross in the ending really reminds me of. And then, yeah, Sawyer's just re recycled. But yeah, um, Simon is. God, excuse me. I think my wife's home because my cats are all running to the door. Anyway, what was I talking about? Whatever. Book Simon. So. Yeah, these are all the different models he has. Let me just... So he texts you first with this, and then he opens up with this, and then he shoots you a bunch with this, and then he hits you with this. If he hits you too much with this, you'll die. Uh, if that doesn't happen, then you'll survive with just a little health. And yeah, you can see that his face is really fucked up. In, like, not a good way. Um, it's all of Simon's mental problems and that's why it's the final boss. So if you don't fight that, you remain as book Simon and you fight this Simon. So that's, you know, bad ending. Uh, and then there's a bunch of hordes of faceless. The area where he's fought is constantly changing. Symbolic of the mental state. Yada, yada, yada. But yeah, that's basically everything, right? Oh shit, did I just... Oh, no, stop. Oh, God, stop. There we go. Um, so, yeah, that's basically all of it. It's a, uh, it's a pretty great game with some rough parts. But overall, a pretty good experience. Um, I have an Alfred. This has been Cry of Fear. It's a fucking 10-year-old game, I think. Eight-year-old game that ran on a 15-year-old engine when it came out, like I said. If you have a PC, you're probably going to be able to run this game as long as your PC can open without crashing. Um, it's free on Steam. The development team, I don't think, makes video games anymore. I think they all shut down and became a, uh, a, a band, like a, a music band. They play music. But hey, um, let them know that they made an interesting story. Yeah, as I said, I've been Alfred, and that was Cry of Fear. And I finished another LP. See you guys later, everyone. Bye. Hey, everyone. So for those who are wondering uh, how I made this, um, this is basically it. So this is the sound. This is the theme as you heard it. So naturally, that's reversed. So playing it forward. You might be able to tell what that is already. Okay.
Can you hear it yet? You might be able to. Let's do one of the let's do one more of those. Wait, hold on. Redo, redo. Whoops. Okay. All right. If you've given up, here it is. Ready? Rats, we're rats. We're the rats. We pray at night. We stalk at night. We're the rats. I'm the giant rat that makes all of the rules. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. And one more time on this one. So, uh, naturally, I uh, couldn't reverse this uh, this process because, wow, that was really, really extreme. But you get the idea. That's how I made the outro. It is the theme song of Rat Movie. Reversed, slowed down, and distorted. <laughs> no, no, reverse, sped up, slowed down, sped up, and then distorted. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs>